You may be seated, unless you want to stand for the whole message. Probably not. Probably not. Hey, Andy, can I, uh, can I ask you a question? Yes. All right, so it may sound a little weird. I want to ask you this question, though, okay? Uh, what do you have your heart set on? I mean, what is it that, that your heart values? Uh, well, what do you love? Yeah, that's a weird question. I'll go with that. Um, but it's a good question. It kind of almost sounds like one of your audience participation questions that you ask so often on Sunday mornings, right? It's not really like those at all. <laughs> uh, I love my family. Um, I've, I treasure my family. Um, they're part of my heart. They're in my heart. Uh, if something happened to my wife or my three kids, um, you know, I go on with life, but there's definitely a hole there that could never be filled. Um, you know, that's, that's one of the things that I, I value and treasure in my heart. Uh, I value and treasure the friendships that I've made uh, here in this church and other places that I've served and the opportunity to be invited into their lives as a pastor. It's, that's a great honor. Um, I uh, appreciate you working with you, having that opportunity. And of course, I treasure my relationship you know, with Jesus and having that time with him and that relationship. And I know it kind of sounds like a cliche when you say this, but I just feel Jesus is in my heart. Uh, we, we hear that, and sometimes we don't like that. So, but it's true. I, I just feel that he's such a part of my life. So now my turn. Why are you asking this question? Well, the reason I ask, I, you know, I've been watching the news the past couple weeks, and I, you've seen the past couple weeks. There have been a couple news stories that have been, have been tough. I've seen uh, the plane go down in the Alps. You know, over the co-pilot wanting to commit suicide, 150 people die. Yep. I'm nervous enough going on planes as it is. Help. No, that's, that's a scary thing. Or, or what happened yesterday in Kenya at the, the university. Tragic. 147 people die, 70-some people injured. You know, they, they went to a Christian prayer service and, and killed as many of them as they could and went from classroom to classroom asking, hey, who here is Christian and, and would just kill him? I mean, there's evil, horrible stuff going on in the world. So why did you ask the question, what is my heart set on? Well, you're a pastor. And as a pastor, I mean, you're supposed to represent the heart of God. Hmm. Right? Um... Yeah, that's what I try to do. All right. Well, I don't think you're doing a good job. <laughs> Thanks. I mean, I you're, that. <laughs> you're, you're, you're talking about all those people you love, all those people you cherish. And, and as a pastor, you stand up here and you talk about how God has love for all of us as people and how God cares for each one of us and, he, and his heart is set on us. But then we look at all that, that stuff that's going on in the world and it doesn't look like that's what God's heart is set on. In fact, it, it looks like God doesn't care about the world. Or even if he does care, like he's not powerful to do anything about it. So, it, you know, I, I think about tonight, for instance. What are we celebrating? We're celebrating Good Friday, mm -hmm. right? So what's good about Good Friday? Well, it's because that's the day that Jesus, that we celebrate that he died for us, and we do celebrate. It's our sins that were laid upon him. He took our sins. He took our place in death, and he was crucified for us. So Jesus died so our sins would be paid for. Yeah, but if you look at it in a different way, I mean, Good Friday is about God letting evil happen to Jesus, isn't it? I mean, Jesus is innocent. He hasn't made any mistakes. And yet sins are laid on him. And he ends up dying for that. It's, it's like the people who died in the Alps or the people who died in, in Kenya. God let Jesus go through a living hell for to believe what, what the Bible says. You know, that, that Jesus, was, Jesus was scared. As we hear this story, Jesus is begging God to take this away from him. But God doesn't. 
So what does God do? He lets Jesus be betrayed by his friends. He, he, he lets Jesus get mocked and scorned and spit upon. He lets him go from sham trial to sham trial. He lets him be crucified and, and pierced and crushed by that, that cruelest torture instrument. He let all of that happen to Jesus. Jesus, who, who said he represented God. Doesn't that look like God's heart is set on evil to you? So have you ever heard these questions? Have you ever thought about them? Have you ever had a conversation with someone like Harris and I were having? And if you've ever wondered about questions like this, you aren't alone. I would say from my own experience, probably every person on earth wonders about this. But there are people all throughout the Bible too who wonder about this question what place does a loving God have with evil? What does God actually set his heart on? I was struck by a, a passage in the book of Habakkuk. It's a fun book to read sometime if you, if you got an itch. It's only three chapters long, not too bad. And it starts like this. This is a prophet from God, someone who talks directly with God. And this is how his book starts. How long, Yahweh, must I call for help, but you do not listen? Or cry out to you, violence, but you do not save? Why do you make me look at injustice? Why do you tolerate wrongdoing? Destruction and violence are before me. There is strife and conflict abounds. Therefore, the law is paralyzed and justice never prevails. The wicked hem in the righteous so that justice is perverted. Remember, this is a guy who's speaking directly to God. He has an experience, you know, he hears the voice of God in, in a way that most of us wish. don't get to experience. We wish we could. And he is wondering aloud. He is struggling with why there is evil. So when we struggle with this question, we are not alone. But that really still leaves that question even if we're not alone with struggling with it. What is God's heart set on? And I think we can start answering that question. What is God's heart set on by looking at tonight, by looking at Good Friday? Hear the words from John chapter 10, Jesus' words. The reason my Father loves me is that I laid down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. God doesn't force evil of today to happen to Jesus. That, that's not what he did. He didn't force the evil of the day upon Jesus. Jesus chose to lay down his life, to be obedient to God the Father to go through the suffering on the cross. He chose to die because he knew that the story wouldn't stop there. It wouldn't end. He knew about the pain that was coming, but he knew the reward on the other side of it as well. And so he willingly went to Jerusalem knowing that he was going to be killed. He willingly stood before the trials, the sham trials that you talked about, you know, and willingly allowed himself to be beaten and willingly allowed himself to be crucified. And he knew it was all coming. The author of Hebrews says it this way, For the joy set before Jesus, he endured the cross scorning its shame and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus Christ knew that there was joy for him after the cross. Now this is an Easter Sunday spoiler alert, so if you don't want to know what's coming early, just plug your ears. Jesus knew he'd be able to lift himself up out of the grave. He knew that his life would come back to him. He knew that by dying on Good Friday and rising on Easter Sunday, he'd receive joy. And that joy was winning new life for you and for me. Because of what Jesus has done on Good Friday and on Easter, we are 
free, free from condemnation, free from shame, free from pain, free from the penalty of death that hangs over every one of us. And so with that joy in his heart, knowing what he would accomplish, Jesus went to the cross. And then he sat down. That's what Hebrews says. He sits down just like the high priest would do once sacrifices are done. The sacrifice was done on Good Friday once and for all. And so Jesus sat down. And I imagine he did so with a big old smile on his face. You want to know what's on God's heart? You are. You and me. You are on God's heart. He wants us all to come to know him through his son, Jesus, so that we can live. That's why Jesus went to the cross. Just think about that scene around the cross. The rest of the service, after we stop talking, we're going to get an opportunity to hear, hear that story once again. But I want you to picture this. Think about it. It's around the cross. One of the criminals mocks Jesus. And how does Jesus respond to that mocking? He doesn't beat him down. He doesn't call down curses on him. He could have blasted him, but what does he do? He just listens. One of the other criminals, the other cross, pleads with him. He's in pain. People on the ground are mocking Jesus, and, and Jesus calls out to God the Father. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And when Jesus saw his mother weeping at the foot of the cross, Jesus gave her to John to love and to care for. He gave John a mother to care for him. And on the cross, we see that God's heart is towards all these people. People who have rejected him. People who are, you might just think they're too far gone. People who have wandered away. People who have uh, abandoned him, the ones that ran off at night, uh, the people who are with him at the foot of the cross, the people who were against him. On the cross, we see that God's heart is one of forgiveness towards those who've sinned. God's heart is one of love and care and compassion towards those who are hurting. God's heart aches not only for spiritual needs, but, but for earthly needs. God's heart is one that brings and yearns to bring comfort and love and inclusion into his family. At the cross, God shows us his heart. If you've wandered away from God, you can see how he is probably even calling out to you right now as you sit in this service. If you've sinned and who here hasn't, hear Jesus asking God to forgive you. If you hurt, hear Jesus saying that he's going to raise people up around you that will care for you. At the cross, God shows us his heart. He knows the pain and brokenness of the world. Why? Because he experienced it himself. He knows the pain of unjust murders, just like those in the past two weeks. He understands the despair and the deepest darkness we go through. He went through that on Good Friday. Jesus understands the, the loneliness as he was separated by God or from God for us. Jesus understands our fear of our mortality. Jesus understands our weakness as we, as, excuse me, Jesus understands our weakness as he himself collapsed under the weight of the cross that he was carrying. In the cross, God enters our darkness and he embraces us with love, with acceptance. He enters into the pain and sorrow of our life and he understands, he comforts, he loves, he forgives. In the cross, Jesus goes through hell for us. 
Just think. When someone has gone through what you have gone through, there's an understanding there. If you've lost a loved one to suicide, and you know someone who has also lost a loved one to suicide, there's a, there's a, a bond there. You, you can talk to each other because you know you felt some of the same things. Now, that's just one example of how he truly understands what we're going through. God knows that we're wired this way. And on the cross, Jesus goes through the worst of life. And he understands you and the worst that you could possibly go through. You know, could God have figured out a different way to deal with sins? Maybe. I don't know. God's smarter than me. I'm sure he could have figured something out. You know, maybe Jesus didn't have to go through what he went through. Maybe God could have just set it up so he could have just snapped his fingers and it would be gone. But the fact is this. God did send Jesus to go to the cross for us. And because of that, Jesus stands in solidarity with our suffering. He shows the extent of God's love for us. He chose to experience the horrors you and I go through rather than turn away from them. Just so we know the depth of love that he has for us. In the cross, God shows that his heart is to care for us in our pain. And it's in the cross, in kind of a surprise twist, that God enacts a plan to grant victory. But more on that on Sunday. In the meantime, we're going to hear from the Holy Scriptures tonight. We're going to hear about Jesus' journey to the cross and the ground. And as we do that, I want you to listen. Listen for the heart of God speaking to you. Listen how the heart of God beats for you. Listen how his heart calls out for you. Listen to what Jesus whispers through all the pain and all the suffering and all the shame and all the blood and all the death. I love you, my child. I would go through anything for you. I love you so much.